Welcome. Let's take a look at the definition for local maximum and for local minimum. A function f has a local maximum at a if there exists an open interval i containing a such that i is a subset of the domain of f and f of x is less than or equal to f of a for all x in the interval. So we're looking for an open interval around a value, x value a such that the output at a for f of x is greater than or equal to the output values for all other x in that interval. A function f has a local minimum at a if there exists an open interval i containing a such that i is a subset of the domain of f and f of a is less than or equal to f of x for all x in the interval. That is, for x equals a, we can find an interval around a such that the output value at a is the smallest output value for all x in that interval. So let's go ahead and take a look at this function here and apply these definitions. So as I look at this function, the first thing I notice is it, it appears that I have a, an absolute maximum and in general a maximum at a value of x slightly less than 1. So let's go ahead and Let's call this a1, and at a1, um, it looks like we have a maximum. Now what we need to do is we need to make sure that there is an open interval around a for which the output value at a1 is greater than or equal to the output values of all the other x values in that interval. So I can do that. I can create an interval around a1. So here's my interval around a1. And for all of the x values in this interval around a1, their output values are going to be less than the output value at a1. So it appears that f of x has a local maximum at a1, and it appears that local maximum is approximately 7. Now notice it appears we have another uh, maximum here at x equals 4. So I could call uh, 4 could be an a2 for my local maximum. And so I could take a2 and I could create an open interval around a2 and there's my open interval. And for the x values in that interval, their corresponding output values or their y values will all be less than the output value when I use a2. So we saw there is an a1 and an a2, both of which create our locations of a local maximum. Now let's consider the local minimum. Um, this is a smallest y value or a smallest output value um, in an interval. So it looks like we have an, a local minimum here. Let's call this um, a 3. And I can create an open interval around a 3. There's my open interval. And for every um, x value in that interval, their corresponding y value 
will be less or greater than the y value at a3. So that means that the output value at a3 is the local minimum for this function. So now that we have defined local maximums and local minimum, let's go ahead and define critical points and look at an important theorem. Let a be an interior point of the domain of a function, f of x. If f prime at a equals zero, or if f prime at a is undefined, then a is a critical point. So let's go ahead and take a look at our graph here on the right. First of all, let's notice that at this point on the graph, we have a horizontal tangent line. That means that f prime at, we'll call this a, is equal to zero, and a is approximately located there. Moving along, um, just to the right of 3 on the x-axis, we have this local minimum that we saw. And at that point, the function does have a horizontal tangent line. We could say that f prime at b equals 0, and b lies right about there, and we can see that for A, we have a local maximum and an absolute maximum. And for B, we have a local minimum. Now, notice that in the definition for a critical point, that F prime equals, or F prime of A is undefined, is also the location of a critical point. And if we look at our graph here at 4, um, the derivative is undefined at x equals 4. So let's call this c, and f prime at c is undefined. And it's undefined because it's a sharp corner or a cusp. It's undefined because there's not a unique tangent line. There are actually an infinite number, infinite number of ways we could draw a line through that point. So that is also a local maximum. And so the inclusion of f prime at a point, x value, being undefined is important in determining whether or not we have a critical point. So for this particular function, we do have three critical points, one at a, one at B, and one at C. Now, if F has a local extremum at A, and F is differentiable at A, then F prime at A is zero. So, let's see how this applies to this function. So, at A, F does have a local extrema. It has a local maximum. It's a nice smooth curve. The slope of the tangent line is well defined at all points on the curve. So at A, it is true that there is a local extremum, and it is true that F is differentiable at A, and therefore we know that F prime at A is equal to zero. We can say similar things about what's happening at B. So at B, F has a local minimum. Again, the curve is nice and smooth and differentiable. And um, there is a local minimum. So at B, yes, there is a local minimum. And the uh, function is differentiable. Therefore, we know that the derivative is equal to zero. Now at x equals c, we have a slightly different story. 
we can see that there is a local maximum here at C. Um, so F does have a local extremum there, but notice that um, the function is not differentiable at C. Um, so for Ma's theorem does not apply to this critical point. Um, the derivative of at, at C, the derivative of F at C certainly is not zero. It is in fact undefined. So we need to be a little bit careful when we think about Fermat's theorem. Fermat's theorem says that if there is a local maximum or minimum at A, and if the deriv uh, function is differentiable at A, then that derivative is zero. So there's two conditions there that must be met. First, there has to be a local extrema at A, and then the derivative has to exist at A. If those two conditions are met, then the derivative at A is equal to zero. Now, often uh, we get confused and we think about the converse of that uh, theorem. Sometimes we think, well, if f prime of a equals zero, then f of x has a local extremum. And this is not true. We have an example here on the right. This is the cubic function, f of x equals x cubed. And notice that here at x equals zero, we do have a horizontal tangent line. f prime at zero does in fact equal zero, okay? However, we can clearly see that there is no, absolute, no local maximum or minimum at that point. So be careful. Fermat's theorem doesn't tell us that if the derivative at A is zero, we have a local maximum or minimum. And that's often a point of confusion. Let's look at one quick example of finding the critical points for a function. So we want to find the critical points of f of x equal to 2x cubed minus 30x squared plus 126x minus 1. So critical points, recall, there are two things we have to consider. We need to consider where the derivative equals zero, and we have to consider where the derivative is undefined. So let's start by finding the derivative of our function. Uh, the derivative of 2x cubed is 2 times 3x squared, so 6x squared, minus, uh, then the derivative of 30x squared is 30 times 2x to the first, so that's 60x, plus the derivative of 126x, which is 126, and then uh, the derivative of the minus one is zero. Now what we wanna do is we want to find where that is equal to zero. So we have a nice quadratic here. Let's go ahead and note that we do have a common factor of six in all three terms. So we'll have six times x squared minus 10x plus 21 equals zero. And we need to solve that equation. So we can factor that quadratic and we get six times. Uh, we will get x minus seven times x minus three equals zero. So the solutions to that equation are x equals three and seven. And so that's what we get by first considering um, f prime of x equal to zero. Now we do have to consider f prime of x 
being undefined. Now notice that f prime of x is a polynomial. It's a quadratic and is defined for all real numbers. So we don't get any critical points uh, from f prime of x uh, being undefined because it is defined for all real numbers. So with that being the case then the critical points for this function are x equals 3 and 7. I hope you find